Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and today we are taking a look at the Philadelphia Flyers. As the Flyers, we're going to play a fun game today called Who Stays and Who Goes. Who gets traded from the Flyers during their rebuild here over the next couple of years and who's going to stay? Now, Danny Briere made it pretty clear that the entire team is not getting traded from the studs up. They are keeping some main core pieces and it's Kind of easy to assess who is probably on that list of guys that will stay based off of their age, based off of the, the time on ice they've kind of been playing and their potential at the NHL level. Now, a lot of this is also going to depend on if Danny Briere is the GM or not, but I think to an extent it doesn't because I think no matter who the GM is, they're going to probably make at the very least a similar move with a lot of these guys. So let's get right into it. So let's start off with the guys that I think are safe. The guys that are going to stay in Philadelphia amidst this rebuild. I'm going to start off with Joel Farabee. I think Farabee is, for the most part at this point, fairly safe. It depends on what happens here over maybe the next year or two. Maybe next summer we start talking about a Joel Farabee trade. Uh, but he needs to figure it out with, with John Tortorella. And I think that's why I have some level of concern on him maybe staying or not. But if I had a if I had to choose one or the other, stay or go, I'm going to go with Farabee figuring things out and finding a way to make it work in Philadelphia. I have Joel Farabee staying a member of the Flyers. Morgan Frost, similar situation. I think that he's gotten a lot more ice time this year than he has in years past, and it seems like he's starting to figure out his game. Maybe it's not to the level that Flyers fans were hoping when they drafted him in the first round a couple years back, but he's still going to be a guy that can be a good guy to build around during a rebuild and I think Frost the fact he's a center he can put up some points which this team desperately lacks I think he's a good fit for this group over the next couple of years Noah Cates Noah Cates has been a breakout player here for the past couple of years and there's a lot of excitement around what he could become at the NHL level as an NHL regular now he's not at that point yet he's not an NHL regular him and Elliot Denoyer who we're going to get to in a second uh, Noah Cates is a guy that's going to get more ice time next year, and I think he's a guy similar to Morgan Frost and Joel Farabee. He's going to be one of those guys that's in this lineup next season while they try to figure things out. And that kind of takes me to my next point, and that's Elliot Denoye. I think Elliot Denoye, first of all, he's got a great name, and I, we have to preface that. But also, when you look at what he's provided, he's looked comfortable in the NHL. From the limited time we've seen from him, you know, Tortorella has to be quite impressed with what he's seen from him so far in his NHL stints that we've seen. So, kind of Noah Cates and Denoye are in the same category, where I think they're guys that are fringe players right now, playing in Lehigh Valley for the most part, but will be NHL guys next season because of the lack of depth. And, you know, guys may be getting traded out this summer. It's going to leave room for guys like Noah Cates and Elliot Denoye to get some more ice time. Carter Gauthier, fifth overall pick of the Flyers in last year's NHL draft. I expect to see more of him. He's a big guy. Maybe not the scoring potential that I think that the Flyers are maybe expecting him to end up being. But he's a big guy. Uh, he's, I think he's playing at, at Boston College or one of those schools in the Northeast. So Carter Gauthier is going to be a good player. And I think that's a guy that it might be close next year. Depends on the patience level of the GM, right? If it's Danny Briere, I could see him starting this season at Lehigh Valley, working his way up and kind of becoming what those two guys I just mentioned earlier, kind of in that role, right? If, you know, if we're in a pinch, we have a couple of injuries, we're not, we don't have a ton of depth, maybe they'll call up Godier for a couple of games and, and you get to see a little bit of him before the end of next season. Maybe not an NHL regular with the Flyers, but going up and down, right, between the bus trips in Lehigh Valley, a couple of games up in the NHL, maybe just to get that taste of the NHL and kind of work on his development, work on some parts of his game, and, and gain some confidence at the pro level. Cam York, and that is it. Cam York is the other guy, and that's it for me, because I think when you look at this group, Cam York is probably the most promising prospect out of all of them. Uh, his development slowed down a little bit. There was some concern at the beginning of this year when he got sent back to Lehigh Valley. It was the end of his career. Cam York is not a good defenseman. And now we're starting to see things go back in the right direction. So, you know, Lehigh Valley has taken a lot of heat for their lack of development of some players. But you know, I'll be honest, they've done a good job with Cam York this season. And what could have been a bad situation ended up not being so bad after all. And he had an injury earlier this year. I was actually there in Hershey when Cam York got hurt. 
So he's faced a little bit of adversity this season as well, but he's just found a way to grind it out. He's played well this season and just getting things done. And I think that the Flyers have a long-term future with Cam York in the lineup. And I think that's a guy that John Tortorella has kind of been, you know, he's been very quiet about, which is never a good thing. But uh, he's a guy I expect to see as he continues to mature and develop and get used to the Tortorella system. He's going to be an NHL regular on the Flyers. Now we get to the spicy part, which is who gets traded out of the Philadelphia Flyers organization. And there's a pretty big list, but I'm going to go with five guys here. Starting off with Ivan Provorov. We've heard Provorov's name in the rumor mill for the past two years now. And I think with a competent GM that is actually willing to make trades, I think we're going to finally see that deal get done probably this summer. Uh, there's going to be a lot of suitors in for Ivan Provorov. Big defenseman has had a lot of potential wrapped around him throughout his career. He just hasn't been able to put it together in Philadelphia consistently. And I think that's something where he just needs a change of scenery. He's a good defenseman. There are teams that will give up some value for him. Hopefully they can get a first round pick for him, if not a second round pick. Uh, but again, that's kind of where you need the GM to make sure he finds a way to get the most value he can for a guy like Provorov because he is one of their more valuable assets on this hockey team. Tony D'Angelo is next on the list, and very similar to Pro Rob, but more on the offensive side of things. Uh, Tony D is a is a very offensive defenseman, and he's you know the biggest issue with him is his character, and maybe some questions about the way he thinks, and he's very vocal on online and things like that. But if a team has a good veteran room, that shouldn't matter too much, and I think. A guy like D'Angelo needs a fresh start. He's a skilled defenseman. We saw what he did last year in Carolina. We know what he, this guy is capable of, right? His ceiling is very high. It just wasn't going to happen in Philadelphia. The Flyers just have not been a good team this year, and he's kind of been a kind of been a factor of the team not playing well. So, you know, he also doesn't really fit Tortorella's system. We all know that quite easily. We could have told I could have told you that the day they signed him, right? So. It is what it is with that. It was worth the try, but it's just, it's not going to work. The only thing is they have to find a way to move that contract, which I do think a team out there would be willing to do. Travis Konechny. Travis Konechny is going to be an interesting one because he's got a lot of value in my opinion. I think he's underrated, and I think a team will be willing to give up a first-round pick for this guy. He's a very talented hockey player, very good two-way game, really fits that sort of, you know, which is a shame. He really fits the Tortorella system. Very good 200-foot player, can win face-offs, good penalty killer, and he scores. And I think that's really frustrating to lose a guy like that. But again, when you're in a rebuild like they are, he's in his mid-20s. Realistically, he'll be around 30 by the time the Flyers are back in the playoff picture. Probably not a spot where he's really going to want to stay long-term. And considering his contract situation, all the more makes it like, yeah, this is a guy that's probably on his way out very soon. Now we get to Carter Hart, the goaltender. There's been a lot of rumors about what could happen to Carter Hart. Potentially going to Seattle, Vancouver, any of those Western Canadian teams, considering he's from Western Canada. Uh, he played for the Everett Silver Tips back in the day. He's a very good goaltender. The question is, what's the value? Can they get a legit, solid prospect, a first-round pick, and multiple other assets in a deal for Hart? Or does the market look at it as, well, he's another goaltender that's fairly good, hasn't been that good recently. So, you know, in terms of a career, right? Like, I think the last couple of games he's actually played very well. But in terms of, like, since 2020, Carter Hart has not been the level that I think the Flyers fans hope for and expect out of him. And again, some of that is the team in front of him, absolutely. But I think that's going to determine how his, his value is in the marketplace. And that's going to be an important thing for a Carter Hart trade and depending on who's interested, right? And I also look at a guy like Scott Lawton. Uh, Scott Lawton maybe isn't the flashy guy that everybody's going to be going after scoring a ton of goals, but his name will be thrown out there. And I think he's a guy that, you know, in the right scenario could be a really good fit for a team down the road. And again, I think when you look at the Flyers, it's trying to get as much value as you can for these guys. And, you know, same thing for a guy like Kevin Hayes. Hopefully they're able to get something for him. I'd love to see him go to a team like Boston, but they're not going to have the money. Uh, I'd love to see him go to Boston or Columbus. I think the Blue Jackets are a good fit for him in that sense. So we'll see how things end up for a guy like Kevin Hayes. But, 
you know, I think all these guys, they're going to find a home fairly quickly. I don't think it'll be that hard uh, to find landing spots. It's going to be more of what value can we juice out of these guys. And you hate to kind of make it that way, but the reality is they need to get as many valuable draft picks and prospects as they can for these guys and just find a way to kind of rejigger the system because these fans... They have no hope in this team, rightfully so. This team looks lost, directionless. The last couple of years, the message has changed throughout the time. It seems like as the season changes, the Flyers' mentality of a retool, you know, mid-rebuild, like what are we doing, right? There's no straight direction. It seems like it's kind of a windy path that nobody knows where it's going. And hopefully with the new owner, hopefully with maybe not new ownership, I think Flyers fans would like that, but... Hopefully with the new direction of management in terms of GM and the senior advisor positions and things like that, we'll see some sort of change to this team, some fresh blood, some fresh ideas for this team moving forward. And that's all you could really hope for. But when I look at this team, there's going to be a lot of change here over the next couple of years. Definitely a team to watch during the draft. I think they could move some of those guys for draft picks. I could see teams like, you know, St. Louis, Washington, teams that collected a couple of Early draft picks in the first and second round for this year's draft, I don't think they intend on using those picks. Maybe the Flyers are a team that says, hey, listen, we'll take your 20th overall pick for Provi, right? Or find a way, whatever the trade is, right? I'm just using that as an example. You get what I'm saying. Finding a way to get assets now and finding a way to move out guys, get them into scenarios where there's a better fit for them, just moving them out of the toxic environment of Philly and just kind of changing the mentality there. I think that's really what the Flyers are looking at here so let me know what you guys think leave some mock trades in the comment section down below and as always guys thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys again next time peace